guys welcome back to my channel and also welcome if you are new i'm so 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 grateful to have you all here so my name is Aquia B and here on this channel I cover all things faith, culture and encouragement and as you can tell from the title of today's video I'm going to be slipping into the topic of idolatry and this is such an important topic and one that I'm really excited to talk about and obviously we've got um, a focal point of the topic that we're going to be delving into which is the unfortunate news of a celebrity couple's separation. But before we get into that as per usual I just want to quickly encourage you to leave a like down below on today's video and comment something that you take away from my video or just something that you'd like to add as a comment or deduction from what I've said or some scripture that I've brought up or just something that you'd like to add or deduct from some scripture or something that I've said and if you haven't already then please make sure that you have subscribed to this channel and turned on that notification bell so you never miss a new upload. Also, if you haven't already, I've added a new feature here on this channel with the channel memberships, and that is where you can become a Bible buddy and there's exclusive perks such as exclusive videos, videos that you can see before anybody else, as well as so much more. So if you'd love to become a channel member and support this channel even further, then the link is down below and it should come up with a join button so you can become a channel member today. And this is kind of a weird one because I've taken a slight break from Instagram recently so I've removed a lot of my posts on my page but you can still follow me over at a queer B or Esther ABF and that page is still running I'm just kind of revamping rethinking having some alone time with God outside of social media and coming back even bigger and better so now before we get into the main portion of today's video let's get into the verse for today's video Okay, so today's verse for the video comes from the book of Colossians, and today we're gonna to be reading into chapter three, verses one through to seven. And I was only meant to be using one verse from this um, segment of scripture, but I was just so encapsulated by the scripture that I just had to include at least these seven verses but Colossians is a great book to read also chapter three um, is just delving into such important things to do with idolatry with carnality with the flesh with the spirit with the previous version of you into the transformed and renewed redeemed version of you um, so it's just a great book to read on that transition and um, a great chapter to dive into and really dissect if you're trying to look into and um, develop your understanding of the flesh versus um, you know spiritual awakening like your spirit your fleshly death and then your spiritual awakening in Christ okay so now I'm just going to go ahead and read directly from the passage so it says if then you were raised with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God set your mind on things above not on things on the earth for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. So this passage is so strong and it's just so convicting, especially the last bit um, where it's talking about all these different sins and all of these different um, kind of links and attachments that come with the flesh. And I think the part that I actually wanted to um, read into was verse five. And that's where it says, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So that was kind of the focal verse and then the rest was a bit of context and just a bit more to tie the passage together. Um, so I'm just going to focus on verse 5. So this part was just so interesting to me, so intriguing to me because I've been thinking about this um, concept of death of our flesh for such a long time, for maybe the past like six months-ish. And I might have brought it up in previous videos and deductions and things like that. But when we are dying, when um, we're you know, removing fornication, we're removing uncleanness, we're removing uh, passion, we're removing evil desire, covetousness, um, and idolatry, all these different things, we are killing our flesh. There is no um, separation from these things without death. There has to be a finality and a and a firm full stop to all of these different things. There cannot be a pause, there cannot be a break, there cannot be, um, you know, a uh, 
a little pause there's just no room for that there's got to be death because these things I'm pretty sure there's another verse which um, is talking about the pattern and the cycle of sin and saying how um, you know when we give it uh, it, when it comes to full term it kind of uses the analogy of a pregnant woman um, and it kind of says that when um, when it's reached its full term then all it produces is death all it produces is destruction and all of these different things so nothing good comes from letting these things live and thrive um, and even a small you know smudge of these things left that we are unrepentant for or we're not willing to even address it will creep up on you eventually and will overtake your life with idolatry and just all of these not great things so it's just a great verse to um really remind us that we cannot move forward we cannot become a new creation we cannot um have that partnership with Christ if we're not willing to let go of these things and this is what separates us from a holy perfect just loving God is the things that you know comes with sin that comes with flesh and in the death of our flesh we're able then to become a new creation in him so now I'm going to go ahead and get into the main portion of today's video. If you enjoyed this segment of scripture, make sure to leave your deductions down below. If you've got anything to add, if you've got any more um, little bits that you'd love to add to the scripture and um, comments and things like that, make sure to leave those down below. I'd love to start a dialogue down below about this scripture because it's just, it's just so amazing. I just love reading the Bible and it's just, yeah, every time I go back to read different verses on different topics and you know you know when you've had your like um, specific scripture or your specific passages that you're reading and then you go and read a different topic like idolatry was not on my agenda for the coming weeks but reading into it and reading into um, Colossians 3 has just been so refreshing and it's just made me want to even read this and add this to my Bible study time and my time with God. So yeah, if you have any more comments, if you have any more deductions, please make sure to leave those down below. I love to hear all of, you, all of your thoughts and deductions and let's get into the main portion of today's video. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk for a few minutes about this main hot topic and then I'm gonna get into some deductions about um, idolatry itself because this is such a weird instance. Um, I think this uh, situation kind of sparked off in my mind um, to do a video on idolatry, at least to start an introduction on my channel about idolatry. I might do further videos or different topics surrounding idolatry, but I think it's just such an introduction to um, bring this to the forefront of our attention because I think relationships, um, especially Christian relationships in the Christian community, it's just so, um, I wouldn't say idolized, but it's definitely like from the outside looking in, a lot of people could be idolizing Christian marriage, Christian relationship, that kind of connection. And I think that there's a whole nother topic of, um, Christian relationships, Christian singles, etc., etc., in the church that needs to be addressed, and a lot of people have started to address it. Um, the way that we kind of idolize relationships and see marriage as like the end goal for every Christian, and like singles just don't have any excitement, or you know, they haven't reached that final destination until they've got into a godly Christian marriage. Um, so I think that this is such a hot topic just because it's to do with a Christian relationship, never mind the actual breakdown of their marriage. Um, but yeah, let's get into a bit of background about how I've come to know these two people. So um, Devon Franklin and Megan Good have been in my sphere of knowledge since probably, I was about 15-ish, like separately away from each other. I've known about them, um, just Megan Good, I think. I didn't know, know too much about Devon Franklin. Um, and then when they actually got together, that is how I actually got introduced to both of them together and their story, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I love to listen to a lot of like relationship advice and um, you know, especially godly, wise Christian uh, relationship advice and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So when their story was being um, 
you know, widespread and everyone knew about the book, the weight and everything like that. I haven't read the book. Um, I know a lot of people that are talking about this topic actually haven't read the book. I think we're just so um, invested collectively in their relationship because it was a Christian couple. Um, there are a lot of people that were so, so invested into this couple's relationship, etc, etc. Bought the book, attended different talks they were doing, etc, etc. Um, but I was invested to the point of um, just appreciating a godly relationship and there's so many areas of, um, especially Megan's side of the story, that I really related to that, um, you know, I think a lot of Christian singles can really relate to um, her side of the story, his side of the story and just, I think that's what was so inspiring about it, that they were just two separate people that ended up coming together that to form a godly Christian relationship. So I remember actually coming across um, their, their kind of love story kind of thing. And I remember watching like loads of videos on their story. As soon as I found out for one, they were a Christian couple. For two, they had waited until marriage. I was just like, yes, Lord, like, thank you, Jesus. This is so good. This is such a great, a pair of role models to look up to in this kind of season. So I was just so encouraged by their relationship and I think that is one of the main positives that a lot of the Christian community took away from their relationship. People were so encouraged um, and I don't think you can take away from that. I'm still not, de I'm not depleted because their relationship has come to this end. I'm not discouraged by that any in any regard because I know God is still a good God I know that God is still faithful and I know that um, marriage is a perfect uh, a perfect design from God it's a godly design so therefore it's not flawed it's the people in the marriage that are flawed and then that creates you know its own problems marriage as an institution alone is not corrupt is not flawed and it was perfectly designed by God for imperfect people so I, I've actually watched a few um, deductions and videos um, from other people here on YouTube, including, I think it was Ruslan and uh, The Max. Um, they're a Christian couple, or is it The Mackies? I think it's The Max. Um, they're such an amazing couple. Their story is so encouraging as well. Um, and all of these people that have talked about it have handled it with so much grace. Um, and I think that that is the for a very long time this is one of the topics that has come up that I think has where it's been like a lot of grace and a lot of caution and a lot of fragility has been you know surrounded this and another couple I think talked about it was Paul and Morgan as well that I'd watched their video so it's just nice to actually have this community and this um this life being spoken into the situation instead of just detractors, 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 because I think it's so much easier to take away and tear down at something than to build something up. It takes so much more energy. Um, so I just wanted to bring in my perspective and make this into a video on idolatry, not that people are idolizing their relationship, but just that it's got the potential to be idolized in this specific regard, especially in the Christian community where so many people are waiting, so many people are celibate, um, well not celibate, so many people are abstinent um, and you know, so many people were inspired by their story um, that they put into the book, The Weight. Um, so me personally, I was so encouraged by Megan's side. I think that, um, especially as a woman, it takes a different kind of um, perspective, obviously from Devon Franklin's side. He's a pastor, he's a minister, he lived in that life. She got saved. Um, I'm not sure about his salvation story, but she got saved and then um, had this whole relationship with God, etc, etc. And I think that I actually found them when I got saved. So I think a while after I got saved, I was not even thinking about relationship, nothing like that. Um, and then after a while, maybe like a year or so, then I started thinking, wait, <laughs> wait a second. Like, you know, God has a perfect plan for every single one of his creations. And, you know, I think that my story will end up in marriage. So. I was like, I think it was one of those things where you got re recommended something in your YouTube, um, your YouTube uh, homepage. So I clicked on it and that's how I got introduced to them. So I really got encouraged by their story um, in that season where I was like, wait, 
there's something purposeful to relationship as well like it's not just me and god um it's me and other people as well and once i got past that point i was like maybe it's me and a godly christian man um so their story was just so encouraging to me in that season that i was walking through of discovering that there was a purpose to waiting there was a purpose to um having a godly weight with a person so it's not just like um you find a godly man and all of a sudden like everything's handy dandy like actually having intentional purposeful um fruitful relationship with another godly um christian so the first thing i'm going to get into is the perception of um an idol so i think sometimes that people can be deceived by the appearance of an idol looks are fleeting and i think that's such an important point because idols are never ugly um idols are always something that we find desirable something that we want something that um we just like to look at and it's never something that is hard for us it's always something that you know adds to our life in a either material way or just a way that will just purely um materially add to us it's not it's not something that is includes sacrifice in some kind of way to us most of the time um in the situation i'm talking about so in looking at relationships i think that we can easily idolize them especially when especially because of celebrity relationships everything is sparkly and new and fresh and usually it's a young couple that's in the spotlight and um you know they're popular and they've got great repertoires and um all of these different things they've just they're just beaming everything's great everything's gucci and we think because we see such great public personas that come together that that is what is going on privately as well and it's no one's business to share the hardships and the struggles of their relationship of their private life um that is not they're not obliged to do that at all but i think the the kind of let down the disappointment that comes along with idolatry is that the idol is never really what you think it's going to be the idol will let you down and that is just pure and simple because it's an idol um it's not something that was designed to be in the place of god this place of um, worship and praise and affirmation that you're giving to this idol is actually meant for god um god wouldn't be jealous over this idol um if it wasn't something that was meant for him god is a, a righteous god god is a holy god and he's a loving god he doesn't have jealousy in the way that we see jealousy he has a righteous jealousy that's like this is going to harm you more than it is going to benefit you and this is for me the only perfect the only holy the only just um without any flaws so this idol that you've created is flawed and you might not see it but that is why i've told you he told us in the uh, ten commandments um to have no other god before him to not have any idols and things like that so that is the purpose why these idols are not all they're cracked up to be and i think alongside with the sobering realism of their divorce um that obviously does kind of make the christian community kind of sigh because it's just another christian relationship that hasn't worked out um yeah as i said before this is just two flawed beings that come together under a perfect um institution that happened to have not succeeded in it um this obviously doesn't f make the whole institution flawed or anything like that um there's still so much hope there's still so much joy there's still so much fruitfulness in marriage and in that connection and that institution and that covenant with god in the bible the traditional way of like idolatry was usually to make some kind of idol out of like bronze gold silver etc etc and create those by human works into some kind of idol some kind of figurine to worship um and that just shows how flawed like humans are we cannot make things that are perfect and holy and you know consecrated god is just so 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 much more than that and i think instead of idolatry we should be just showing appreciation i think that would be so much more um beneficial to just show appreciation to the covenant of marriage that has been created and established by god and also encourage people encourage people um you know not tear them down all of this different stuff i think it's so much more 
beneficial to the community to just uplift people and obviously call out when there's stuff like sin and when there's um, violations of God's law. But these are such sensitive times and I just wanna uplift and encourage people that are going through situations that are against their will. We don't know the full extent or um, the ins and outs of this situation. So I just wanna encourage everybody to pray into this situation um, it's so important to pray before we speak as well because we never know who's listening, in what way our words are going to impact the world and also why we're actually saying something. Okay, so I just want to talk a little bit on how they actually ended it and actually came to publicly profess that their relationship had not worked out and that their marriage had failed um, because I just ended the video and realised that I didn't talk about that Just so I just want to add a little insert here talking about the um, how everybody found out, the reaction, everything like that. Um, so I think the... I actually read the post that Devon Franklin posted on his Instagram page and um, reacted to it with a, a few other YouTubers. I watched their videos and saw that statement that he'd released. The first thing I thought when I saw that and read that through myself, I was just... it just didn't seem right. Like, I just... The holiness and goodness and oh just the fact that God institutes marriage and then that is what is left to say at the end of a marriage it just made my heart kind of sad because marriage is not something to take lightly it's not a step in a process it is the final destination if you choose to get married that is the final destination for a Christian that is my stance I don't um, Obviously nobody wants divorce, I'm not saying that anybody would like divorce or, you know, sees it as, um, you know, just a part and parcel of marriage, like you'll end up getting divorced. But I think the way that it was phrased in the, um, in sharing that with the public was not in the way that I think a lot of the Christian community appreciated. Just because as Christians we're meant to take it so seriously. Um, and I think there was a line that said it was like a step in the progression of their love or the evolution of their love or something like that. And I think it was somebody like Ruslan or somebody that said like, this isn't a step in an evolution of anything. This is death. Like this is deterioration. This is like the end of the road. Um, if you're going to walk out of this marriage. And I think that especially as people that are not married, people that, you know, are looking to get married and things like that, it is not a step. Like if you choose to go into a marriage, you can't take it lightly. Um, and I think that's why looking at your backgrounds, looking at your ideas of the future, looking at your relationships with God, all these different factors, premarital counseling is so important because you can get into a situation that you're not prepared for or that you're not in total agreement with and try to walk forward and feel like it's the hardest thing in the world and that might cause you to give up. As it says in the Bible, how can two walk together if they're not in agreement or something along the lines of that? Like if you're not in agreement and it's like little red flags that are popping up, those little red flags will eventually become like massive um, duvet covers. Like you, they're not, things that you should be looking over and I'm not saying that's the situation in their case literally nobody knows so you can't speak into that this is just a video on idolatry I don't think anyone of yet has heard from Megan Good about the divorce I'm not sure I don't follow her I don't follow him I don't you know I'm not that invested into um, their personal lives and things like that and I think that you know this is an awful situation and obviously there's going to be grief and loss on both sides regardless of instigation and um you know finalizing divorce and all of this different stuff there's going to be different reasons and different feelings of loss so um yeah it's definitely not something to take lightly and i just encourage us all to uplift them in prayer uplift their community and their support systems in prayer and hopefully um you know god will just continue to use them and strengthen the body of christ going on from this point because you know this kind of thing it does kind of rock the community especially like um people that have witnessed their story invested into their story but we cannot let our hope in christ our salvation everything like that base be based on other people or other people's lived experience um so yeah that is just my encouragement that just because one thing fails it doesn't mean that the institution of marriage is broken 
or that you will not have a successful successful and um, fruitful marriage. So yeah, um, I think I'm gonna go and head into outro now and finish up the video. But yeah, I just wanna bring it back to Colossians to close um, and encourage us all to die to our flesh because um, when we take on more of Christ, when we actually put on Christ instead of our flesh, that just helps us to navigate this life so much better. Um, and also to have grace for people. Um, broken situations are broken situations and it doesn't help to add negativity to them. I feel like there's been quite a lot of, um, you know, not so great situations in these past few years, like with a few different controversies, etc., etc., coming up. Um, within the Christian community, but all that we can do is pray to uplift each other, pray about our sin, pray about uh, removal of our flesh and dying to it. Also pray for spiritual um, discernment and spiritual growth and wisdom and maturity so that we don't enter into these covenants lightly with God. And this doesn't take away from the impact that um, Devon Franklin and Megan Good's relationship has had. Um, it's been such an impactful relationship in terms of the way it's impacted society and the Christian community. So this definitely doesn't detract from the work that they've done and the witnesses and the testimonies that they've given. Um, I'm definitely still encouraged by it and I will um, continue to hold that place that I was in when I was listening to them and it was inspired and encouraged by them in you know a place in my heart that's just a little bank for encouragement because that doesn't take away from it that their marriage didn't work out um but yeah i pray over any broken situation in this world and that god will just step into them that he will renew them that he will restore them and that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven and um yeah that is all i can say about this situation um i pray that god blesses you and i'll catch you in my next one stay blessed and bye Thank you.